Hello everyone. My name's Flipper and uh, welcome to my garage. If you tuned in on the last episode, we were able to get the engine and transmission out of the white car crackers and started to get that ready for whatever was to come next. And while we were gone, I took the transmission over to an old friend of mine, Scott Cassidy. He, uh, him and his dad own Riverside Gear in Eaton Rapids, Michigan. Now they, they specialize in racing transmissions, manual transmissions, drive lines, stuff like that. Couple of reasons I took it to them. One, if you remember from the last episode, there was quite a bit of play in the tail shaft housing where the, the drive shaft went in and clunk, 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 clunk. Mm, not good. Um, another slightly more equally alarming reason, when I picked up the car, the white car, I uh, asked the previous owner, what do you run for fluid in the transmission? He said, oh, just gear loop like you would in the rear end or a manual transmission. Upon further review, Falcon transmissions run ATF, automatic transmission fluid, not gear loop. So when I drained the fluid out of the trans, it came out multicolored and smelling like the worst thing known to man. And this crazy swirl pattern that looked like some sort of trippy bowling ball. On top of that, there, let's just say I've seen less glitter in a kindergarten art project. Not perfect. So I took it to him, had him rebuild it. Big thank you to him. Uh, now, as, as long as I do my part and take care of it, it should last me the rest of the season, if not longer. So that's a huge weight off of my shoulders. And... Well, I guess the, uh, the other thing I should talk about is, uh, while we were gone, the uh, elephant in the room, if you will. This is the new late model chassis. I already started doing some work to it. We're adding some bars, a little bit of bracing, some gussets, some body mounts. I'm really excited about this car. This is, it's got a lot of potential. It needs some work. I mean, I mean, it's a used to me, new to me used car. So you gotta expect, you're, you're gonna have to do something to it. But the, the bones are there. The wiring doesn't look like a 19th century fire hazard. I'm excited. So this is the new car. As you can see, we already started doing some work. Uh, you look down here, I started to weld in some of the old pop rivet holes. It used to be a piece of sheet metal that came across here. And over there, I put a bar in here, just trying to help strengthen that corner up a little bit. Also welded in some gussets, and we got a few more to put in. I do want to add a bar from up in the corner, tie it back into the cage here, and the same thing from over here, and tie it back into the cage here. And we'll make both of those removable, that way we can still get the engine in and out, and then that'll help tie this, this whole front end together and help keep it from flexing and moving as much. Back here, this has a winner's quick change rear end in it, which is awesome. The old car had an old Benson quick change, and they're getting a little outdated, a little harder to find parts for. So again, this one's got the newer winner's quick change in it. The other cool thing about it is this right here, the rear end on this, it's got a cambered rear end. This tire, instead of it being straight up and down, is actually kind of leaned. And what that does is as the, tire, the car corners, the tire is going to kind of want to pull against the track surface. And with us leaning it, it's going to give us a little more contact patch and a little more traction through the corners. With this, see right here, this is where your shock and spring bolt onto the car. And it's got this bar here and that bar there holding it together. And I want to add a bar from here all the way to the corner of the cage here and just kind of triangulate that and stiffen that up. Again, trying to keep it from flexing and moving as much. And I'm going to do the same thing over there on the other side. 
Another neat thing is, let me get over here so you can see, this right here is the power steering pump. And as you can see, it's connected to the rear end. Right there, this is where your drive shaft's gonna bolt on, and it goes to the transmission up there. So as the drive shaft spins, it's gonna spin our power steering pump and provide power steering. What's really cool about that setup is when you need power steering the most, which is when you're sitting stationary in the pits, that's doing nothing. So that's perfect. But otherwise, yeah, I mean, it's, it's really not a bad little piece. I'm, I'm really excited. I can't wait to get this car uh, out on the track this year. Don't ask how I'm holding the phone. I don't have a tubing notch or anything like that, so I'm stuck using a grinder. Now, I always try to get that on there, right? Like so, I always try to get that as close as I can. It just takes a little patience, and uh, you can kind of massage it out with a grinder and get it really, really close. I've got a little more work to do on this piece, and then we'll be ready to weld it on. Well, as you can see, we've got the two shock mounts braced, primered, ready to go there. Next, we're gonna jump to some seat mounts. I'm gonna try to do as much fabrication work as I can before working on suspension, the rear end, all that stuff. And the reason being is I wanna get it all welded and primered and only have to paint once. Um, we're gonna actually paint the interior. The red and black's a great look, uh, honestly, it used to be my son's colors, Bryce's. Uh, me, I've been, uh, I've actually grown really fond of purple. Uh, a few years back, I uh, drove a purple car for my buddy Bob. Really liked it. There's not too many of them out there, so trying to incorporate more and more of the purple in. So this is going to be black. Uh, that piece right there might end up purple. That'll be purple. And then the body itself is going to be a blue and white setup. So we've got most of the tabs and gussets and bars and stuff welded in place and threw some paint down. Got the fuel cell out. We gotta clean that up and then get that ready. We'll paint that, put that back in. And nose job. Went down to True Force Performance and picked up this nifty little Outlaw late model nose. Had a good talk with Doug True over there. And got a few pointers on what to do with this thing. So, so when I was figuring out where I'm gonna put the, the interior dash and all that and start doing some of the body work where I'm gonna hang all that, I did it by, first I set ride height and I used these little guys. This is, well, it's from Menards, and it's from the plumbing section. And it's just two little pieces that thread in, and I can adjust my ride height with that. And if I need to go a little lower than what I can thread, I just chuck it up on my little mini lathe and cuts them out. And I've got the chassis leveled off on the cross member, because that's... That's where I'm going to be doing all my setup stuff from, with that level. And that's where I want my, my body to be. And then to figure out where everything else was going, I used one of these guys. This is a laser level. Um, 
I bought it off of Amazon probably a couple years ago. Honestly, I bought it to do siding and housework, but hey, it works well for this. Got my marks around the chassis, and that's where I started to build bracing and everything along the way. One of the other things I'm doing is got this nice heavy bar. Well, not heavy, but sturdy bar right here. My tin is going to go from here down to that bar. And the reason I want this nice and braced and sturdy is should something go sideways, this is an egress point or get the heck out of the car immediately point. You know, safety can come in or I can come out. So I wanted to make sure that this was going to be sturdy enough to support a middle-aged to overweight me. So while we are working on the interior of the car, I went and I bought about $15 in dollar store construction paper. And I'm making these little templates. And cutting them out so they fit around the bars and everything. And then I can take this, transfer this over to sheet metal, which is quite a bit more expensive. So I can make all my mistakes on this before I start cutting up any metal. I already got the transmission tunnel put in. Went for a little thicker metal there. Um, you know, I'm all about saving weight, but for some reason having paper thin aluminum right next to a bunch of rotating parts right next to my hip, I wanted to opt for something just a little thicker. So let's get in here and you can see you know, that's, that's pretty decent. So a little bit of protection. Probably mostly in my head. Now, once you do all your templates, and you're gonna put them all around the car, they should look a little something like this. we have most of the tin work already mocked up and in place and it, just a PSA if you guys uh, you take all this time to bend up the metal make it look nice take the extra five or ten minutes and measure out all your popper of it holds you know there's nothing worse than we have a nice piece of sheet metal work but the the popper it's all kind of neat so take the extra couple minutes it's gonna look a lot better in the long run you're probably wondering what like all these little things sticking out of here are. What they are, they're called Clecos. And they are one of these. These are fantastic little tools. The way they work is you drill your hole and then you take these pliers and you squeeze these guys. And you see how the tip there gets thinner? Well, you can put that in the hole and see how there's a, let's see, there it is. See how there's a little ridge on the tip there? Just the tip? Well, when you let them out, they're going to expand and pull the metal tight and that holds them in place. And it's a lot nicer when it comes time to take this off or paint to just pull these out than it is to drill, a, you know, about a million popper of it's out of your sheet metal. On top of that, all holes are already pre-drilled. You just got to size them for your rivets. Unfortunately, 
I think that's going to be it for body work for now. We're going to do the rest of the body last. Might do some work on the nose because I got to put a radiator in and the air duct that's going to help direct the air into the radiator and help keep everything cool. So we might do that before the very end, but I think we're going to do the body last. And the reason being, it's a lot easier to get to everything and work on things when you don't have a body in the way, dead or alive. So we're going to do that last, I think, well, you're probably wondering about this. Why is this here? What is this? This is the deck lid from the first car, the white car, obviously. And I was going through the old sheet metal, basically throwing it further back into the weeds to where you can't see it from the road. This is the only piece, I think, on that car that isn't bent up or beat up, or banged up, or messed up. How cool would it be to incorporate that on this car? Especially since, yeah, it's got the usual special thanks on it, but in addition to that, everybody that was helping me get that other car back on the track and thrashing on it, I had them sign the deck went back here. So it's, it's got all sorts of little Sharpie signatures. I love to be able to incorporate that on this spot. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a little different, but I think we can do it. And I think the next thing we're gonna do, we gotta get this fuel cell figured out. We gotta get that in order, get that painted, stuffed in here, plumbed, and then we can kind of work our way forward. We'll figure out mounts for the rear end because. I'm pretty sure that what's on here was just thrown on here to get the car rolling out of the garage and up for sale. So we're going to change that around. we got to get the drivetrain in the car, which that's going to be interesting. If you watched my last video, I got an engine hoist from Harbor Freight that's, well, really, it's, it's not suitable to lift a lawnmower engine, let alone a late model engine. And the lift arm is, it's just not long enough. So trying to get the engine in this car without cutting the front end off the car is going to be, well, we'll figure that out. First though, let's get the fuel cell. So this is the old fuel cell, the can for it. As you can see, it's uh, it's seen better days. And originally, the plan was we we're going to take it and repaint it, but thanks to the fine folks at a veteran helping veteran, we got this. This is shiny and new and I this is cool so they kicked in and helped me get a brand new fuel cell can for this car as you can see the Clecos are back we got it kind of mocked up all our little mounting holes and we're getting this ready for paint and then we can stick it right in the car and call that done
So this is the bladder. This is actually what's going to hold my fuel inside the cell. Already got the can on underneath. We'll have to put the cover on top and then locate it with these little tabs right here. And then all those holes that you saw me click out along the edges, drill through our mounting bars, put a couple straps across the top, and bolt it on. Well, folks, unfortunately, that's, that's going to be all for this episode. Make sure to tune in to the next one. Things are going to start coming together really quickly. I hope. They better. Or we're in trouble. we got to, got to go through the rear end of the car. we got some new stuff to throw on this, including some... Uh, well, stuff like this. I'll explain that on the next one. we got to go through the engine. Just a real quick run through it, throw some brand new seals on it, new gaskets, and get the transmission bolted up, get that put in this thing, start wiring it, and start making some serious, serious progress, but that's all going to be on the next one. Until then, thanks for stopping by. My name's Flipper, or maybe it's my name's Flipper. Thanks for stopping by.